Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bourbon Bites Whiskey Reviews with a Gaming Twist. I am here at Broken Barrel Whiskey Company. I have Seth from the brand here. He's welcome. I'm welcoming you back to the show. Yeah. This is our second one. Round two. Yeah. So if you guys missed it, um, last September, we did the, their core lineup. We did, um, what were the ones that we tried last we time? We had, uh, if it was the core, we had yeah. Small Batch, we had California Oak, mm -hmm. we had our Heresy Rye Whiskey, and we probably delved into a little bit of cast strength bourbon. Yeah, so tonight's all about limited edition releases. So these are all brand new. A lot of these you said are literally, some people haven't even tasted except you. Some have you. come, <laughs> some have gone. Uh, what's fun is, uh, Clifton, you're going to get to try a few of these, two of these tonight. You're the first person outside of our company trying them. There we go. Ever. So you, you are, guys love when I get exclusive, like no, so no here we go. Consumer, <laughs> no consumer, you're getting some pretty raw, like uh, one of these was bottled today. The other one was bottled yesterday. Damn. So that's awesome. Pretty, pretty uh, fresh. Well, thank you for fresh. <laughs> making that happen. Um, so for, for anyone that's new to Broken Barrel, um, can you tell a little bit about um, what makes you guys unique? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Seth Benheim. I'm the founder and owner of Broken Barrel. Uh, this all kind of came from a company that we started and still parent company to all of this is Infused Spirits. We're a uh, vodka bitters and bourbon uh, producers. We, we typically follow this, this one overarching guiding principle, which is take something somebody else has made and make it our own and make it better in our opinion and make it uh, interesting and unique and different from all other uh, spirits, be it vodka or whiskey or bitters. And so with our, our vodka, we always took um, bottles of, of you know, uh, pretty good, crystal clear, delicious vodka, and we would add fruit into the bottle, gotcha. down the down the bottleneck, on the bottle. So line, no artificial players like actually infusing. Single like bottle infusions, bottle to bottle to bottle, and we'd put the fruit down the bottle. And that was always really interesting. We did that with bitters, same thing, but with roots, herbs, spices, um, uh, real uh, fruit, everything. That's awesome. And then with whiskey, we were doing it in a tank. But what we do is we take hammers and we literally break barrels, take the broken barrel staves, those slats of wood, um, because we know that wood has a surface area interaction with uh, our whiskey. Mm -hmm. So we actually would dump the whiskey into the tank. So we actually do that just in the other room over here. We have about 50 barrels back there. And then we do it on a very large uh, scale out in Owensboro, Kentucky. So we are, um, we're very fortunate to have great partners in Owensboro. We have beautiful, amazing award-winning whiskey coming out of there. You got to try some of it mm -hmm. last time. Uh, however, a lot of the stuff you're going to try today is in fact from MGP, uh, but this is not your, your MGP bourbon. This is mm. not your 95, five rye. <laughs> These are some of the stuff that, that this is some of the stuff that sits in those back channels mm -hmm. of the MGP catalog. MGP has about 40 recipes mm -hmm. on the books and another 40 that are off the books. Yet almost everyone uses the same ones. <laughs> and yet and yet, all you're going to see is 70, 21, 9 mm -hmm. bourbon and 95, 5 rye. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get a lot of. Which I mean, I love. You know, Don't get me wrong. 30, I love that. The 36% but... weeded bourbon or 36% rye bourbon, mm -hmm. um, which you know, Smoke Wagon and others mm -hmm. are known for. None of that here. This is all <laughs> blends and this. And they, they, we blended up. Uh, a bunch of different stuff together to get to these whiskeys. And again, two of these were bottled uh, yesterday and today. So you are. That's awesome. Number one, man. Thank you. You, you are. I'm actually looking for your opinion on this because I need to know yeah, yeah. what you think. Cause so far only people I pay have tried this <laughs> so, and I'm not paying you. No, so know, this, not is sponsored. Not... <laughs> this is real. Um, do you want to give a couple of shouts to people here in the chat? I see fifth quarter tailgate. What is up? Good to see you in the chat and a new YouTube channel here. You guys go check him out. Brandon is in the house. Good to see you, Brandon. Um, as well as Sugar Kitty, a Bike Club member. Good to see you, Sugar Kitty. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Slapshot is here. My bourbon journey. Scott, good to see you. I just did a uh, Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proof pick with Scott and Jason from the National Drum, which was so much fun. Um, it's on Jason's channel if y'all missed it. Go watch the replay of that. That was awesome. Um, and then Swan, who I was talking to you about earlier, or his name is Sean. Um, he said, just ordered all of your products to my store. So he's the total wine guy. That was oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah, I, it. I walked in the door. He's like, oh, this is just a huge total wine order. No big deal. About to go out the door. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> we, we have a lot. Some of these new products tonight are actually going to be available at Total Wines in Southern California. So any SoCal viewers or subscribers or uh, is it Patreon? Um, well, I do have Patreon, but Patreon. Watch anybody, viewers. anybody viewing anyone that's <laughs> yeah. a, a 
part of the Bourbon Bites uh, uh, cohort. Uh, <laughs> a few of these, that will, I'll mention it again tonight. Some of these are available at different um, channels. I'll throw out as we go through the tasting where you can find each of these. Some of them are available. Um, it's worth mentioning today, March 31st, is the last day to buy from California craft distillers and producers on their own sites, our direct to consumer uh, privileges uh, go away tomorrow. And our site actually does have a buy it now button today. Mm -hmm. It won't be there tomorrow. So wow. tomorrow morning when I get into work, I got to take that thing down. So was, was that like a temporary measure for it was a pandemic? 30, it was a three month, 90 day extension from uh, COVID measures. There's a bill to make it permanent, but the actual extension did end today or tomorrow. Today, uh, today, it gotcha. ends today, it, it goes away tomorrow. So if, if any of these strike your fancy, uh, I know three of these are available on our website. Um, and we do have a few bottles, literally bottles, not cases, bottles <laughs> left. Um, they're, they're mainly here at our gift shop. Mm -hmm. So if people come in for tastings, we want to have that to buy. Mm -hmm. So if they don't get sold online today, they will be available uh, while supplies last. Yeah, well, uh, we should mention. Yeah, we are on location. Actually, actually, we're on Emily, location. Emily's saying like on location. Wow, yeah. So I'm. Yes. Uh, what is this called? East LA. I don't. I don't. I'm uh, just... We're in the Arts District. Arts, arts District. district. We we're in the southeast corner of the Arts District in downtown LA. So. Very cool. I see a lot of you in the chat coming in. I see Joe. I see, gosh, so many people. Whiskey Burger, Caleb, Patrick, uh, Whiskey Nose. What's up, Marty and Jenny? Burger sounds good. <laughs> and Zover's in the house. Okay, we got a lot of people here. Um, so once said, I'll be getting your standard releases, but that Maple Mizunara is calling my name. So Maple Mizunara is where I'll, I'll tell you, that's the first one we're going to try tonight is the Maple Mizunara. And there are eight bottles available from Tasters Club as of four o'clock today. And there are three bottles on our site. So there are 11 bottles that I know of available uh, left in the world. The rest are sold. Tasters Club was the selector of that barrel. Mm -hmm. And they sold out, they pre-sold, actually pre-sold out. So wow. again, it was small. It was like 12 cases because mm -hmm. it was a 15 gallon barrel. Gotcha. So it, it, it was probably a quarter of the size of a full barrel. So it obviously went very, very fast. Yeah. So those of you watching um, this live, make sure just, just 11 bottles, yeah. 11 bottles, brokenbarrelwhiskey.com or tastersclub.com. Uh, either sell individual bottles of this, no memberships or anything. Just gotcha. you can get them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's a fun bottle, man. It's, uh, actually what's really funny is I have a bottle here mm -hmm. that I wanted in clear glass. So I made one clear glass bottle, but it does come in the matte black bottle. Okay. So, so this is the one, this is the one, right this here. is my bottle. Yeah. Okay. This is my yeah. office bottle. You're, you're drinking from my collection. Okay. I'm going to hold it a little closer to the camera <laughs> so they can see. Yeah. 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 Um, it's hard for me to see if they can see. <laughs> uh, you are getting closer. Yeah. It looks like you're right up there. A little lower, a little lower. Oof. You're good. Perfect. All right. So yeah. This is, so this one. So you said this one is okay. So it says distilled in Indiana on it. Yes. Um, so I'll tell. Let me tell you about. Are we are we jumping in? Yeah. Let's do it. Are we doing it? All right. <laughs> so broken barrel tonight. We have five bottles that I've brought out for uh, my friend Clifton here, and uh, we are going to start at the lowest proof, um, which is ninety nine proof. Um, what is maple mizunara? Okay, we did a mizunara uh, finished corn whiskey. American whiskey, mm -hmm. kind of synonymous at this point. Uh, in 2019, at the time, we had a four and five year. A year and a half later, the blend, uh, the, the bottles were, we had a couple bottles returned to us and we actually dumped the full finished bottles into a maple 15 gallon barrel. Wow. So okay. we, we, it just kind of happened that the bottles we had returned to us from a distributor that for whatever reason, they thought they had an account and they truly did not. I don't know what they did, but uh, and I can't even remember which state it was at this point, but mm -hmm. somewhere around 20, uh, somewhere around the middle of 2021, they came back to us. So we bottled everything. So we rebarreled everything. Yeah. And basically around June of 2021, uh, we put everything back in this maple barrel and it sat for about a year and three months. Now, okay. year and three months, we we basically had this uh, maple barrel finished Mizunara original single oak uh, series <laughs> offering. Wow. Rebarreled. Uh, <laughs> so the mash bill on this thing 
Uh, I got that was the time. It was you crazy. Guys, you yeah. guys print the mash bill in the bottles. Which so is awesome. we have a mash bill and an oak bill. So the mash bill is eighty six percent corn, mm -hmm. it's seven percent malted barley, and six percent rye, and it's eighty five percent mizunara. And because most of its life was in the mizunara staves, mm -hmm. and then the last fifteen percent is in those maple staves. However, you only need about fifteen percent maple for it to really uh, impact crazy flavor. Really. Gosh, yeah. I'm excited to try it. So we've got our glasses here, 99 proof. And so because it got an extra year in a barrel, this mm -hmm. is a five to six year blend, not a four to five year blend, gotcha. even though it was four to five year, three years ago, because you can't count the time it was in a bottle. Gotcha. So I mean, obviously it's not, that's the bottle, weird yeah. part. <laughs> it's like this stuff was distilled over eight years ago, Yeah, but it's only a five to six year blend, not a four. Uh, what if it was in a barrel the entire time from the day it was distilled, mm -hmm. it would have been a seven to eight year. Gotcha. But you can't count the 18 right. odd months. It was, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's for the better though, to not count like then people would just be bottling stuff like, you know, no, you can't count the bottle. <laughs> and I don't know how often, if ever products get bottled, sold, <laughs> not sold, don't return <laughs> to the actual manufacturer <laughs> Manufacturer goes, huh, I could just sell these because they're already palletized, boxed, cost of <laughs> goods. No, let me dump this into a barrel and throw the glass and the labels and the shrink seals and the corks out. Yeah. Which is what we did, which is crazy. <laughs> how long did it take to like dump all the, like how many bottles are we talking? Um, it was pretty neck and neck. I mean, we got, it was a pretty full barrel. We didn't lose too much evaporation in the year odd uh, time it spent in that maple barrel. Mm -hmm. Um it was, you know, only lost about one proof mm -hmm. in total. It really didn't change because it was actually entered into, uh, it was entered into the barrel at a hundred proof. Which, which, this is our, this is probably a good time to introduce yeah. Barley. Hello, this Barley. is our distillery dog. Uh, she is a six-year-old terrier and she is obnoxious. <laughs> no, she, she is, is adorable. She's just coming in here, <laughs> interrupting attention uh, hog i appreciate it. joe dropped the link to uh the website in the chat thank you for that joe and then swan just said i got one of the 11 bottles so i think something all right just, hey, just down 10, one up for you guys, 10 so. bottles <laughs> this is like qvc it's like we got know, 10 right? bottles we got nine bottles well, that's the advantage of watching these live like you get exclusive i mean sometimes i'll have guests like distillery guests on and they'll somebody did buy something because i just got an update from a paypal on yeah my watch. there we go so if you guys are like <laughs> buying stuff i actually see it in real time so <laughs> we'll give you another shout out when you do that if you guys want to buy anything uh, but yeah, you can also go to tastersclub.com. If we sell out on our site, there is, there's the eight bottles on tastersclub.com and certainly help those guys out. We're going to do some really incredible uh, things and, and I'll, I'll do a plug for them now and say, we're actually going to offer their members a chance to vote on an Oak bill. And we oh, didn't really okay. explain what the Oak bill was at the beginning, but when we break those barrels with the hammers and we take the different staves Again, we're combining different staves. I know this particular product is kind of like a zombie that was brought back to life <laughs> mm -hmm. from a different oak bill. But our core lineup usually has a 40% French oak, 40% ex-bourbon, 20% sherry cask. And because we are using staves, we can give you those ratios mm -hmm. um, down to the individual stave. And so the oak bill, like the mash bill, is the composition of or the ratio of staves use to finish the whiskey instead of just say the uh ratio of grains so gosh yeah let's go and give this a nose by the way if you guys have any questions throughout the night feel free i'm keeping up with the chat here uh, swan says can i fly out there and make a total wine oak bill with y'all a total wine oak bill with us yeah man i would love that uh the the thing that really jumps out mm -hmm. of the, on the nose at least is that pine oh, wow. that pine sweetness yeah it's so different I would describe it as tree sap. Yeah. If you ever get like tree sap mm -hmm. on your hands, yep. like you're like, oh, I touched this tree. Like, oh, God damn. Actually, you know, that's, I didn't tree think sap. that until you said that, but absolutely. Yeah. You think maple syrup, but it's not. It's right. actually because of the other components at play here, mm -hmm. the corn whiskey, the original lifetime of the whiskey spent in used barrels versus new barrels, which is why it was not classified as a bourbon mm -hmm. because it never went into new charred oak. Gotcha. So you're missing some of those kind of quintessential vanilla caramel notes and instead now you have pine tree sap mm -hmm. syrup you have these weird kind of components that are very it's a different part of like when you think of a tree you think oak 
Right. But it's a different part of the tree. It's like the pine needles on the <laughs> on the on the leaves. It's yeah. the, uh, the the bark. It's the sap. It's the weird part. Yeah, and it's it's sweet, but like you said, it's not like a maple syrup kind of sweet. I mean, if anything, I could relate to um, other than you know sap is like kind of like a floral honey, like like certain honeys that are like made with certain bees from certain areas that do like wildflower and things like that. That's kind of how like it is. Eucalyptus it's... too, a little bit. Oh, I'm excited to try it. Really easy to drink, which is kind of the scary part because you're close to 100 proof. Yeah. You're 99 proof. That's a good I mean. proof, though. I mean, uh, wow dangerous oh yeah i think it's dangerous it's like <laughs> yeah. dangerous and everything we're drinking here tonight is that proof and above so um yeah yeah well i'm curious to know what you think of the higher proofs but this one this is i mean this is just the hair over our small batch which is 95 proof mm -hmm. and our california oaks 88 proof so this one really i mean we put it in at 100 it, it lost a tiny bit of abv and then it went in at 100 or 99, yeah. went out at a 99. I mean, that's definitely like a good, like, I mean, this is the first time I've drank today. So it's definitely, it, it surprised me with like how, how I guess intense it was at the 99, pr 99 proof. But man, that's really good. Good flavor. The pine is all the way to the end. It really lingers. The finish is a little short, I would say. The finish is definitely on the sweet side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not like the darker, like usually with like an, like as whiskey gets age, age longer, there's a lot of the oak on the finish. Like it's that darker, richer. Yeah, this is really. But it's really sweet. It's very dessert. Flavor forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then when this hits yeah. your palate, like it's it's like bam there with the layer. You taste all the sweetness, not like the same kind of sweetness you would get from like other whiskeys. But man, I like that. That's a great great starter there. So it's that's the one that you like said. There's only eleven left on the website. Ten. Well, ten, 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 ten now. At ten at this point. Man, that's that's really really good. So I really. Uh... I'm really happy the way it came out because there was a lot of uncertainty, I would say. Like when we did it, we're right. like, what the hell is it going to taste like? And honestly, I'm not even kidding you. It was just the fact that we had – we had ordered two maple barrels and they we used one for what it was intended for, which is a totally different product that's coming out way later this mm -hmm. year. Um, and we actually just made a hard right turn and said, okay, we're going to use one of these two barrels for – this purpose because we just happen to have this kind of like uh reclaiming of our of our couple cases of our uh mizunara we weren't sure what the hell this was going to taste I like. i was going to say that yeah what, it's were so you... unclear no one's ever done a mizunara maple and our mizunara was really delicate it was a really light balanced like pear apple mm -hmm. sesame flavor whiskey mm -hmm. uh, not flavored whiskey but like the right. flavors on it were of that kind of like really the original, soft, the original one is that the mizunara it's yeah. our blue label with the japanese uh artwork on the right and left panel okay and so when we did this we we're like i don't know it sounds <laughs> cool maple music we knew immediately we're like oh, yeah. maple mizunara duh that, 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 sounds, my eye in the store that for sure. sounds amazing <laughs> yeah but then we're like but what's it gonna taste like we had no idea and then Honestly, I would say by like the three month mark, we were like thieving samples from the barrel. We're like, this is awesome. That's awesome. And we just didn't, we were had so many things going on. We had the new packaging coming out. So mm -hmm. we kind of just let it sit way longer. And in fact, I think we had designed a label for it in the old packaging that never got used. Oh yeah. And we ended up uh, just waiting and waiting and waiting. And that's why it finished. I mean, this is one of our longer finishes. We usually don't go a year mm -hmm. on a finish. Well, especially like the second finishing. Second really, finishing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, second finishing. Because you would have done the original. We did nine yeah. months on the Mizunara wow. first time around. So Man, that I mean, I think from what I remember, like from what we tried last time, that that's my number one so far. But I'm excited okay. to see these other ones coming along. So yeah. do you want to move on to the next one? Okay, so the next bottle was actually the first whiskey we bottled in Los Angeles. This, this is one, kind of our first one. I'll show them. Now, this one... Uh, in January, we submitted to tastingpanel.com and we received 94 points, which was really uh, mind blowing because not only was it sort of uh, affirmation that we knew what we were doing, not just in like in broad strokes with other people's manufacturing, but here in LA, nobody but our own people, like our own staff's hands touching the whiskey. Mm -hmm. We were still able to produce a ninety a ninety four point whiskey, which is awesome. Like it scored oh, yeah. as high as our next highest whiskey, which was our 
cast strength, which also got a 94 points, and that was made in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So to do that here, to replicate that quality here in LA was just kind of like, man, we that's yeah, okay. Like that's not awesome. bad, not bad. So this is 115.6 proof. This is one of two single barrels. We did two barrels of this. Um, there is a nice chunk going to Total Wine Southern California. Mm -hmm. It's also available on oaked.net. That's O-A-K-E-D.net. Oaked.net does sell this product. And then we have a few bottles here on brokenbarrelwhiskey.com as well, mm -hmm. today only. And I'm, uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned that the, the, the oak bill of this is 80% Barbadian. Barbadian, and then, that's a word. <laughs> uh, and then French, yeah, Barbadian or Bayesian uh, rum. There's two ways. There's actually, this Bayesian is the other way to do it. I think. I've never Bayesian. heard either one. So. Bayesian and Barbadian. <laughs> but Barbados, uh, this is a Barbados rum cast uh, and then French oak. So we do a little bit of French oak in there to kind of balance it out. 115.6 uh, single barrel. It's a seven-year American whiskey. So this is one of those weird odds, you know, from the back channels of the MGP catalog. Mm -hmm. um, it is 85% corn and 15% rye. So, so with it being an American whiskey, it, it likely was aged in used barrels? Used barrels. Used barrels. Never yeah. saw – this has never touched a new barrel ever. And so, yeah, it's a, a nice uh, – it's a lot more traditional in the nose, I think. The first yeah. one is so like it smells out of more field. like a bourbon mm -hmm. than you would than you would uh, get from the last one. Yeah, and I'm a sucker for um, rum from I, oh, Barbadian rum, but I am yeah. a sucker for like yeah. I, I'm not big on Jamaican rum. I think that's a little funky, little funky for me. But Too yeah, funky for me. But I mean, I love I love Foursquare everything they're doing. Even some of their more budget brands, I still love. So um, so Foursquare, yeah, Foursquare stuff, the Dooleys and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the for the price, I mean, yeah. they're crazy. Good I've deal. got a whole bunch of it up there. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got a ton of. Foursquare. Oh yeah, for those of you that are. Um, we might at the end of it at the stream. I'll show Patreon a little bit of his collection here. Yeah. Um, over on our after party Discord. I'm not gonna stick around for too long because I gotta make it back. But um, I might pop in there for a minute and just show off a little bit of his amazing collection oh, yeah. here. So well, bottoms up. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, I like that. I proof. love this one. I like that proof. Yeah. Let you know it's there. Mm -hmm. It's sweet. It's a different Come, kind of sweetness, though. Yeah, it comes in nice and strong. The thing is, it's really balanced. Like I think this one really showcases what American whiskey can be, mm -hmm. where it's kind of this oddball category. It's where it's where all whiskeys go that don't know who they are, mm -hmm. right? It's not bourbon. It's not rye. It's not wheat. It's not you know a hundred percent corn. It's right. just this weird mash bill. It's this weird story. And the fact that it's already spent seven years in the barrel and then, you know, you don't count the finishing time, but it right. did finish for over four months. Um, you know, this would have been eight this year, but yeah, it's a, it's a really fun whiskey. And, I, and you know, we'll try at the end. We had four barrels of seven year. We did one rare Americana with uh, bourbon pursuit. Mm -hmm. We did two barrels of the plank Walker. We were really invested in that. And then we did one rare Americana for our friends at bourbon lens so really, uh, really interesting to see the diversity. And you'll here's the fun part, you know. And we can yeah, pour a little more of this at the end. Yeah. Taste this versus the the last one because they're the same exact whiskey from the same place mm -hmm. that spent the same time in the same different terroirs. And then because these also spent a year in Vegas. Mm, okay. So the ABV like went up too. Yeah. Well, so so actually, we got a question. Brandon says. Um, why is the proof on this so low? Usually American whiskey is a much higher proof. So do you know like the like barrel entry proof or anything with like this one? Because I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say low. It's one. Well, it wasn't, like, uh, it wasn't like I've, I've seen light whiskeys mm -hmm. that have been as high. We, when we made our cask of Amontillado, which is our red bottle, mm -hmm. uh, we had the whiskey come out of the barrel at 70 something percent, 71%. Oh percent. Yeah. I've had some like 142 I've... proof whiskey. Mm -hmm. Um, this was not light whiskey. Gotcha. This is a bourbon mash bill. Just aged uh, in used barrels. Just aged in used barrels. So it was not, this was not distilled at light whiskey. It did not come off the still at those higher proofs. Mm -hmm. It did come off the still at a bourbon proof of 160. Gotcha. Well, that's, yeah. So, I mean, I think a lot of people, when they hear American whiskey, their first thought, well, nowadays, not before, but nowadays is light whiskey. Because I mean, yeah. people like Obtanium, like Cat's Eye Distillery are doing those extremely high proof releases. I know our friends, uh, Shelf Turds, did a pick of that yeah. one and it, it was like oh my gosh it was 152 proof i think was it good it, 
It was. It was. It's a really. I mean, it's you can't. You enjoyed it in a different way. You enjoyed this, right? Yeah. <laughs> like that one, you have to like take some baby steps in that one. But I prefer. I mean, it's definitely. What most people would hate it because it's so high proof. But yeah, I'm a bit of a proof for it too. But also, I think this is the perfect proof of this. I think 115. I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, we we you lose a little proof sometimes with the stave finishing, depending on how long you leave it in there. We left this one in a little longer with the stave. So. Mm-hmm. The difference between barrel finishing and stave finishing is that the staves can soak things up a little bit. Gotcha. And they don't give it back necessarily. Right, because it's not doing the full it does, it's in and not, out process. It's not like, the in and out yeah. breathing process. Mm-hmm. It, it is somewhat of a, of, a, of a steel. So we may have lost a little ABV. Mm-hmm. Um, again, the barrel next to it was 120 proof. Gotcha. So the ABVs yeah. were doing different things depending on which one we finished with. So yeah, this one I think the sweetest you said it's like eighty something. Co- and, the, corn. and the rare Americana we did for uh, Bourbon Pursuit was one seventeen two. Gotcha. Okay. So we got different proofs. I mean, this yeah. was the lowest of the two mm-hmm. of the three, but one seventeen, one fifteen, and one twenty. So we got different proofs. Relatively, but pretty, relatively close. Yeah. Relatively close, but still pretty. I mean, to, to go five proof. Two and a half percent, and age the same amount not, of time, and be next to each right, other yeah. all along the while. Yeah, does show you the variant. I mean, it's not, <laughs> so many variables. The type of wood, of like everything. Like, yeah. Well, it's also the type of oak that we finished it with. Like, mm-hmm. how does a French stock turn cask steel alcohol versus a Barbadian rum cask? Like, right. what kind of oak were they using? Yeah, how old were those Barbadian rum casks? I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. I, no one told me exactly how old the bourbon was that was in that rum cast before the rum went into it and then how long was the rum in there i right. don't know yeah well that's the fun part know. i mean you get to experiment there's, a, a bit there's some mystery things. to it there's a little bit of mystery you don't always get all the details sometimes we get the distilling date the bottling date the barreling date all that mm-hmm. stuff of the barrels we get sometimes we get jack squat and so a lot of times we just go with our nose like we just stick our heads up to the bung and we mm-hmm. smell and we go this smells like a great barrel I rejected barrels. We've had yeah. a, I had a mezcal barrel. I had to send back. Didn't work. Oh really? No. Well, that's what I was saying. Like it's got it's got to be fun. Not to spoil exper- anything, you know. Yeah. Well, it's got to be fun to experiment, but then at the same time, you know, you're also making a product to sell. So like, if it, if it doesn't taste good, you're not going to sell it. So that's kind of you know part yeah. of the process. I mean, quality. It has to be quality. You cannot release something that is subpar. You and just can't. yeah, and and I mean, especially when it comes to finishing. I mean, there's other brands coming out that are like saying they're finished in these ridiculous cast but actually they're adding the flavoring in like there's none of that happening here this is like no no we don't we don't do any flavoring of anything we just we just do the barrel breaking and then we we get real barbadian i mean it's all on instagram you can see us we Mm -hmm. we film this stuff as the barrels come in we film it as it's breaking we film us washing the barrels we try to give you guys as much visibility into the process as possible because it's it's kind of fun. Like we love uh, <laughs> yeah. The thumbnail the that. thumbnail of the stream you guys probably saw was like him like smashing a barrel. Yeah, it. <laughs> it is. Look, we have fun with it. Uh, we want you guys to have fun with it. We want it to be a fun product that people can enjoy. I mean, none of this stuff costs anywhere near a hundred bucks. I mm-hmm. mean, we're, we're maybe seventy bucks, eighty bucks a bottle at most. Mm-hmm. for some of the stuff you're trying tonight yeah i mean that, that's what makes it sound too because you know so other brands would put this out in the 199 dollar lottery only like you know i mean you know some people might buy that. it but i i love that you that. guys price it fairly i mean i think it's still a premium our, product yeah our core line's about 35 our cast strengths go for 45 to 50 mm-hmm. and these can range from 60 to 80 depending mm-hmm. on who's selling them but and, and how many were made like there's more plank walker than there is maple mise and so this might be more affordable than this or something like that but um you know there's 27 cases of this there's 20 cases of this there's 27 cases like it's not a lot of we're talking cases not palettes not you know you see stuff from jim beam it's like limited edition six (laughs) thousand cases or seven thousand cases like no and the big the big company so anyway uh here's a fun one our next one is a straight wheat whiskey Oh, okay. So this is not a bourbon. It's not a rye. It's not a corn whiskey. It's not an American whiskey. It is a straight wheat whiskey, and we call it the Reckoner, and we spell it uh, incorrectly on purpose. (laughs) That sounds intense Uh, of a name. Wow. The Reckoner, (laughs) yes. Actually, if you look at the artwork on the bottle, it's just a bunch of images of drawings of me smashing barrels. So uh, did you get to see this one? I didn't see it, no. Yes, you can see me smashing the barrel there and me ripping a barrel in half (laughs) up there. And So this is actually – Oddly, this is also 120 proof. Mm-hmm. 
Um, might have been like 120.1, but we didn't put the point system on this one. Okay. We just kind of we rounded down to the 120. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 120 proof. It is straight wheat whiskey, 85% wheat and 15% malted barley with uh, cognac finish. Oh, okay. So we use cognac cast, 80% cognac, 20% French oak. I was going to say, I don't think I've even ever had a cast strength wheat whiskey. As far as I know, I mean, I'm, you guys will probably correct me. Like, I've oh, had a couple. This one. Um, I don't recall having a cast strength wheat whiskey, so I'm really curious to see. I might even have a cast strength whiskey. You know what? I got one cast strength wheat whiskey there from Law's Whiskey in Colorado for you to try oh, okay. if you want to try it. But oh, that that's nose. about it. I so love that nose on that That's one. a crazy nose. Oh, that's really good. Fruit and caramel. and Yeah, it's like it's like a mix, like kind of plum, a little peachy. Yeah, a little bit. it's got like this sort of caramelized fruit flavor and and uh all this deep mm-hmm. rich it's really like this brandy cherry i'm surprised how i mean that makes sense right wheat typically takes on like wheat doesn't provide too much of a flavor itself it's, it's more sweeter of, it's more right. of a feel and a and a and a taste profile than like a a flavor because people like say a, rye is the flavoring grain and like a lot yeah. of times when you use the wheat well wheat and rye are both kind of flavoring grains right mm-hmm. And then the the malted barley is your enzymatic um, distillate, you know, helps the distillation process unless you're making a malt malt whiskey, which obviously you're going in a whole dungeon path. <laughs> we'll get there on the next bottle. Oh. We'll go 40, uh, we'll go 52 and a half percent malt. Wow. Wow. So we're going to get there. We're going to yeah. get to the malt. Well, I was going to say, yeah, but, this took on, I mean, I've just, I haven't tasted it yet, but on the nose, it's taken on all that cognac, like you said, the fruitiness of it. Sucked it all up. It really, I mean, yeah. if you're, if you're, really heavy on American whiskey and you're curious about brandy, mm-hmm. great gateway uh, bottle for you. Yeah, I'm going to go and try it. Cheers, guys. All right. Cheers. Now, I'd be lying if I didn't say this was my favorite so far. I love this one. You like it? I yeah. love it. I love it. Man. It's interesting because like I said, I, I've, I've had cast strength weeded bourbons, but not just a wheat whiskey. Yeah, it's so it's it's weird to say light when we're talking about 120 proof whiskey, but on the palate, it's not like overly like pulling you all directions. Like some, it's not crazy. Stuff. Yeah, it's not any. You wouldn't know it was any more uh, proof than the last one. Mm-hmm. And the finish on that one, I mean, that's so far longest finish so mm-hmm. far. And it's it's more of the younger. Like, is it really three years? I was gonna say it's more of like a dry finish versus like a sweet because the one we had earlier was like a sweet finish. Yeah, this one's more of like a dry, like more oak oak Bring, forward. It, centers in on the tongue it really mm-hmm. kind of like grips the tongue in a way it has almost like that tannic sort of uh wine feel like a cabernet oh yeah you get that sort maybe of that's what uh, was, maybe that's what i was kind of getting i was saying dry normally i associate with that with oak but maybe we're getting that from the just the cognac itself that that's you know not you know, the finish of it not the actual <laughs> there's no actual cognac in this it's just the cask but yeah um Oh, people are naming the other um, wheat whiskeys they've had. Uh, Brandon says he's had refined wheat. I, he mentions that it's still a refined. Uh, refined's great. I've been there. Um, he, yeah. I, I haven't tried the wheat one, Brandon. I think yeah, the one you let me try. Coast. I think the one you let me try was the rye. I think yeah. I've not tried the wheat. I have Spirit Works wheat whiskey as well. I believe. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. So good question from Swan. He says, um, "What barrels are on your wish list? Calvados, Armagnac, Peated Scotch, Pinot Noir. Oh, lots of options. <laughs> Peated Scotch. We're about to taste. Okay. Uh, Pinot Noir. I'm a I love that's what I I love Pinot Noir wines. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm privy to those. Mm-hmm. What were the other ones? Uh, uh, Calvados, Armagnac, Peated Scotch, and Pinot Noir. I have worked with Calvados. I bought a barrel. I messed around with it. I made a lot of samples. I never ended up doing a release with uh, Calvados, but mm-hmm. I do have an apple brandy finish. It's just not Calvados. It's not to be a Calvados. It has to be from Calvados in France. Gotcha. So, um, which is same with like Armagnac, right? It's based on the region. Right? Exactly. It's a region. It's a type of apple brandy. Um, has to be made with apples versus grapes, which right. is cognac. So we have an apple brandy barrel, but it's, it's actually Laird's barrel. Okay. It's a, yeah. It's a, like the, they're like the East OGs, Coast, like with, East yeah. Coast <laughs> American apple brandy. Actually, fun yeah. fact, I, I did a trivia thing. I think Laird's was the first licensed distillery in the U.S. as far as Are I'm aware. they? 
I'm now I'm blanking because it's been a long day, but I think they're Pennsylvania. I forget exactly where or they're New based. Jersey. Was, I can't remember. It was a trick question because most people probably thought I was saying like, "What's the first whiskey distillery?" Well, well they're Laird's the first... is Laird's is timeless. Yeah, Laird's is great. I actually have a bottle of Laird's. I could stand up, walk over, and look up where it's from. And it's fine. Actually, I could probably look it up on here. Actually. Oh so yeah. While we're doing, he that, was but... telling me. Okay, so tell them about this this setup. I can't. Your no, no, no. It's a... Okay, secret. <laughs> it's a, no, it's not a secret. It's just like. I don't think anyone cares. <laughs> he has a very cool way to organize his whiskey collection. He has like an app and he like can search through it. It's awesome. I do have an app. So jealous for that. Um, I definitely, I mean, some of my friends have like a leather bound, like, uh, like a menu thing. Um, okay, but, Laird's, let's see. Yeah, you just look up this info right here, like right there. Laird's, Applejack is from? New Jersey. Jersey. New Jersey. Okay, Jersey. Yeah. It was yeah. Jersey. I thought it was Pennsylvania for a second, but it was Jersey. No, and Steven says New Jersey. Yeah, he's from New yeah. York. He so we know. have this. There's no way it's going to show no, up on the show, show, but it's like a this big bright light. <laughs> this glowing, that you see. glowing light. <laughs> it actually has a program on it. That's really can, awesome. Yeah. I can look up the whiskey. Um, yeah, Laird's. So we did get an apple brandy barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, have you done anything with it yet, or are you just still deciding what you're going to do with it? No, no, that, yeah, it's it's in the other room. It's okay, aging. so it's yeah, aging. Yes, okay, cool. we're doing a, I can share, we're doing a whiskey called Cornucopia. It's a Kentucky straight bourbon, mm -hmm. two year, uh, that we brought here last year that has been spending the last year of its life in three different brandy barrels. We had another cognac barrel, which mm -hmm. is our grape. Mm -hmm. We have our apple brandy Laird's. And we have peach brandy. Ooh, so it's peach. That is going to be fr a fruit bomb right it's there. It's a fruit city. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a fruit, uh, you know, nuclear weapon there. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. So three kinds of fruit brandy. Um, we have three barrels aging in three different casks. And we're going to break them up and, and do a, a whole oak bill with that. So it's a triple brandy. It'd be 33% grape, 33% apple, 33%. Now I get where uh, the name comes from. Cornucopia. Yeah, makes sense. That's awesome. Cornucopia. Yep. <laughs> Any Esther, like when do you think that'll be ready? Like later this year, maybe next year? What do you think? Um, I'm talking to somebody who is interested in that now. Okay. So we may have that locked up. Um, I will if you're not following uh Broken Barrel Whiskey on Instagram, that's where most of our announcements come out. Our website's pretty behind the times. And so <laughs> and TikTok is I don't know what I'm doing with TikTok. I don't either. I, I just I just <laughs> get on there and I post the video and I posted one video that got a hundred likes or a hundred views, and I posted another video that got seven thousand views. I'm like, I don't. What did I do differently? Them. Exactly. What did I do differently? I don't get it. I post <laughs> one video, it's a stupid video, and it gets seven thousand views. I have no idea. I I I, I, I don't get it. to understand it. I put videos up, and the same thing happens. Some of them like do really well, and some of them get I like, like no views. Yeah, <laughs> I like the consistency of Instagram. I know I'm yeah. gonna get about two hundred likes a photo. Right. Which makes me feel great, and then that's and it makes me like are the companies doing great? People yeah. are connecting, and you guys can I tagged so the story I put up this morning I tagged um, Broken no. Barrel, um, your personal Instagram, and um, Infused oh, yeah. Spirit. So I do have a, a whiskey Instagram where yeah. I post the bottles I'm drinking, which I've been really bad at keeping up with that. But I'm, yeah, I'm bad about that too. I don't. Yeah. I, I wish I used Instagram more because there's a lot of people on there that you know don't really watch the streams or the YouTube stuff, and they just care about the cool bottle shots. I don't. I'm not a photographer. It's all video so now, man. I gotta video. like get videos going. I gotta take snippets of this, and I gotta post it on Instagram. Okay, where do you where do you sit on malted whiskey, Scotch, and and American malts? How familiar are you with American malts? Um, I'm familiar. Like I've had a few American, like American which ones? Um, Westland. 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 Or um, Westward. Both I should think American. both. I get them confused. I don't know which ones which, but I had both of them. Um, I've had some from Balcones, which is Balcones like Balcones lineage and yeah, all that. Yeah. Yeah. And then ah, oh, this. You guys in the chat, let me know what or what are some of the American or uh, American single malts that you guys have had? Yeah. That we may be familiar with. So this, you said this is a, um, a malt. Well, we had a debate: was it ready to bottle or not? Because it had, it had been. It's kind of a weird one. Um, we, similar to the Mizunara, we had sixty cases of unlabeled Isle of Pete, which was a fifty-seven and a half percent malt, hundred percent malt mm -hmm. from MGP blended with the same wheat whiskey that was in this last one. Mm -hmm. So basically barrel for barrel, one barrel malt, one barrel wheat, but the gotcha. wheat does have malted barley in it. So the mash bill actually leans towards malt okay. because 50, 50, right. you still get more still malt. Still more malt. Yeah. a hundred percent and then 85%, 15%. So interesting. what happens is your, your net uh, mash bill is uh, 47 and a half percent wheat 
52 and a half percent malt. Wow. That's interesting. So, I don't think I've ever heard of any kind of combination. Never. Like that. <laughs> that alone is, is unique. The first Oak bill was 100% 15 year Lafroy cask for the, um, Isle of Pete. Okay. We then let it rest, not in broken barrels, but in full Ardbeg barrel. Wow. For uh, We put it in uh, December 30th, the day before New Year's. Mm. So the last day of the year, we're like, what do we do? And we're, looking <laughs> at this, we're looking at this palette of unlabeled mm -hmm. just glass corks and whiskey and nothing else. No labels in the boxes, no labels in the bottles. We ran out of – we actually – the yield, for whatever reason, worked out when we did the Isle of Pete that we had too many – bottles and not enough mm. labels i think the the producer the, the bottler thought we were going to get more labels but we never ended up gotcha. buying them because okay. when we sold out we're like all right we're done <laughs> so we're looking at these 60 cases and we're like what do we do so we dumped those in an ard bag barrel on uh the day before new year's of 2020 you know it was a slow year it was a pandemic year it was <laughs> the heart of it and we're that's a good way to go out of 2020 like just <laughs> Was raging, yeah. she was raging. So we had we we had previously ordered an art bag barrel, mm -hmm. and we're looking over like, all right, let's let's barrel it. Mm -hmm. So we barreled uh, one barrel, and we have actually a quarter barrel. Uh, we actually had a little more than a full barrel. Gotcha. Uh, we bottled it and we we barreled it in an art bag cast ten year. So now it has Lafroy fifteen year stave finish, barrel finish art bag ten. Mm -hmm. A uh, month and a half ago, we bought another Ardbeg 10. Okay. Put the staves into the dumped barrel. So we got a third peated barrel. So now, the, I will tell you. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, so so the malt itself isn't peated. Like it was. it was. No, like, no, no. No peating in the distillation or fin or anything. It's just coming from the Any the smoke influence is coming from the Lafroy Ardbeg or second Ardbeg barrel. So two Ardbeg 10s and one Lafroy 15 it is the most subtle, light, gentle, but present smoke. Mm -hmm. It really has this sort of, um, there's a term that I learned. I didn't know about this term until we got it down this rabbit hole. Uh, Subois. Subois. I don't know how, to, how do you spell is, that? Uh, it's on your sheet there. Oh, okay, Subois. there we go. S-O-U-S-E-O-I-S. Oh. Oh, so it's, like, so it's, so, it's spelled like sous vide. Forest sort of. floor. Okay. Think of the floor of a forest. Think of like Mossy. you're walking through a wet forest hike. Think about moss. Think mm -hmm. about a wet log. I know it's not the most like <laughs> immediately appetizing. But when you think flavor, of like peated, but... peated scotch, I mean, they describe it like, like treacle and they, they call it like all these like, like yeah, so terms like that. This has got this real earthy, and I'm talking earth, like soil mm -hmm. characteristic. This is our peated weeded malt. Okay. Yeah. But on, it is, on the nose, it's like. It's smoky, but not like a. I wouldn't immediately assume peated. It's like the fire's gone out. Right, it's right. The, I was gonna say it's ashy, smoke, ashy smoke. It's I like think. if you were to stick, if you had a fire going tonight, mm -hmm. and you were to stick your head in the fireplace tomorrow morning yeah. after the fire's long gone out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's. And I love that note. That's, it's the aftermath. It's the it's the smoke second life almost. Oh man, that smells really good. I just see a couple people in the chat. Talking so about okay, so 108 proof. Yeah. Um. The total barrel age of this is 36 months. Uh, and the next one we'll do will be 48 months. So we're going to have to do a 48 month version of this uh, later on. Gotcha. Um, I see some of y'all are listening off some of the single American single malts you've had. Uh, Brandon in Delaware says, We like old, old line single malts. I haven't heard of that one. And then Steven says, McCarthy's out of Oregon. He's yep. had him likes. McCarthy's, um, yep. And Bourbon Baller and Bourbon are in the house. He said, Damn it, Clifty, why did you break the barrel? I didn't break the barrel. That's all this guy. Y'all saw the thumbnail. Damn it, Clifton. <laughs> God damn it, Clifton. Why did you break the bed? <laughs> I don't even know if I could, like, I'm, I had to do a one arm swing at that. I, mean, I had to, like, I would probably go cut my own head off with it. <laughs> I don't, I, I used to, I got it to, depends. There's, the there's different weights. Massive, right? There's like, different weights. There's, okay. we have a six pound head, mm -hmm. an eight pound head, and a 10 pound head. Like, I just imagine myself backing uh, myself on the head. <laughs> yeah. So I prefer the, I actually like the eight pound the most because. You get a little more velocity. The ten pound, you would think like, oh, you can wheel around the mm -hmm. ten pounder, and it's obviously a little heavier. But I feel like you get a faster, more like you can just more it, satisfying. It just, like <laughs> you, 
there's a better swing. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. Having swung the thing a million times, <laughs> I feel like the eight pound is kind of like right in the middle. It's like when you're bowling, mm-hmm. you can always get the 15 pound ball. Yeah. But I somehow have more control on like a 12 or 13. I go, I, when I do bowling, I do the same. I go for a lighter. I ball. like a yeah, little, little bit, little bit lighter. I can throw it faster if it's lighter. And that way, like usually. Well, it's control. It's like, right. like when I'm swinging the 10 pound, I don't always hit it where I want to hit it. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of like I'm a little off to right. the right or the left or whatever. Like, I get tired after more, like fewer swings. I get more tired out. So mm-hmm. I think there's more, more uh, accuracy. Maybe is what it makes is. sense. Because yeah. you know, it, with, when you're breaking a barrel that way, you kind of want to be a little more precise. On if you hit the wrong spot, nothing happens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like it just bounces back at you. So, so when you guys get the barrels sent to you from the different, um, like let's say the, the Barbadian rum, is it does it come disassembled? No, no, no. Okay, so they no, come no, as no. like a. Full... The only one that's we've we've we on two occasions we have ordered barrels. We got a huge discount because like, hey, the barrels like we have these faulty barrels. They're coming apart. We're like, that's perfect. That just <laughs> that makes our out. job. Yeah, we don't have to break them. Send them yeah. broken. So we did that with the Bees and R the first time, and we did that with. Um, Oh, which one? Oh, God. Uh, the Amontillado. The really? Amontillado is like, can we send it to you in parts? We're like, yes. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah. We'll take the Amontillado in parts. Well, that was one thing I didn't know because I, I was looking at how, you know, because I mean, I mean, you guys know this, but like with a lot of Scotch distilleries or Irish, they use used bourbon barrels. So when we send the barrels, we're usually are taken apart when those are sent overseas. Um, I didn't know that. I learned that because I, I don't know why I learned that. I, random bourbon fact. Is that real? A lot of them the they take them because it's part? easier to ship them versus being together. They can they can load up a container of them. You can get more. Yeah. So and that's so how. What do you what do you get on that nose? I haven't tasted it yet. Oh, on the nose. Yeah. It's, it's I'm that. loving it. I'm loving that nose. Yeah. It's it's not I, like we bottled we, this today. Really. So oh, this is one of the exclusive. You and I yeah. are like I'm. I had a glass of this. We I did have. Uh, I, I took from like I filled a bottle from the tank last mm-hmm. night and I had a glass last night, but this is like my second reel. And I actually had a couple whiskeys before it, so I'm a little warmed up. But like I'm I'm drinking this with you. Like this is All my right. first like Cheers this is you. my first yes. uh real proper Glen Karen tasting of this. I'm excited to see how it is. It's great on the nose. It's probably the nose better. is a lot of different things going on. Mm-hmm. You know, you smell it on one angle, you get a little bit of that. You definitely can smell the malt, the malt itself. I mean, it's not overwhelmed by that smokiness. Like a beer, a beer like brew. You know, when you go to like a mm-hmm. brewery that's in the process, like they're brewing, like right. they're fresh going. Yeah, you get that brewery floor, which is you know the malted barley mm-hmm. is not a crazy. Disconnect. But it's it's surprisingly sweet on the nose, like behind the behind the smokiness. Like the smokiness isn't overpowering if you're someone that's kind of opposed it's really to smokiness. Mild. The smokiness is not the first thing you get. The mm-hmm. first thing you get is really the barley. And I get that brewers. It's not hoppy, but it's like really the, that brewers. It it is. If I were to smell this, I would say American malt. Like I would go, okay, that's an American malt whiskey. Gotcha. Well, you're more familiar with it than I am because I I don't know what I would say if I smell. I would just probably. Get well, I have the balconies, and I've got a couple other. I don't know if it's balcones or balconies. I've, I've heard I've, balcones, but I I, I mean I don't know. I'm not from Texas. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> and there go the dogs. <laughs> they smell. They smell the, the drink. That's so different. It's oh, like, you do get the smoke at the end on the finish. Yeah, it goes away and it comes back. That smoke. Yeah, I was gonna say like at first. It first of all, it's vastly different than all these other ones. You mm-hmm. do get a little. You said there's some wheat in the in the in there as well. I'm getting that aspect of it. I think I, I don't usually because like I said, I've never had that combination before. I gotta do a little more. I gotta do it. <laughs> Here, I'll hold this up for people to see. So, yeah, you can get a good. Uh, uh, yep, that looks good. So it's called Fen Walker Two. Yeah, what is the, so, What is the uh, name for that? Why uh, does it come from? The Fen, this is the Fen Walker Second Sighting. Okay. And I'll show you. We did a Fen Walker before. This is not the first Fen Walker. In fact, it's kind of cool. We had the first. This is the first Fen Walker. It's long gone. Uh, came out in 2020, and it has that cool little monster on the side of it. You can uh, see, yeah, it's a, it's a little, yeah. Little actually, looks, it got clear. It got clear. But there you go. <laughs> we brought that monster back. Oh yeah, on this bottle. So the oh, monster yeah. is back. Same monster. That's really you cool. Gotta see the monsters. Yeah. Kind of got his two iterations, but 
This is the Fen Walker second signing. I don't know if you can see that, but pretty yeah. neat. he came back. I mean, by the way, I didn't mention earlier. I love the black bottles. I mean, are you guys uh, trying to do that for like, all the releases? For no, no. Or? So for anything out of here, out of LA, mm -hmm. the signature is the black bottle. There were a few uh, instances out of Kentucky where we had to release the black bottle because we were literally out of class. So there were a few peach brandy and rum and uh, rye reserve oak series bottles that we did mm -hmm. that were black bottles in California. But other than that, no, we did a modern times uh, bottle okay. as well. That, that, that one is uh, gone now. I think mm -hmm. uh, at least at the distributor level, it's gone. I will say once I had the second and third, I already finished. I'm really bad about taking my time with it, but I think at first I was kind of shocked by how different it was, but the more I drink it, the more I could really pull out those like nuances you were talking about the different, elements of not just smokiness it's not overpowered by that um but it's really i mean i haven't had much american single malt, so i don't have too much to compare it to but that's that's even if you're a bourbon drinker i think that's in line with something you're familiar with it's not too out there if that makes sense or i love it okay you like it? i love it i think it's so fun i think it's i'm very happy because if i'm being like brutally honest we got a double gold medal on the Isle of Pete, but it was my least favorite of the single oak. Mm. Then we did the Fen Walker, and that came out and kind of went quick. And I liked it. I thought it was a little unbalanced in the end uh, on, like, final reflection. I thought maybe – not sure. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I've redeemed – our malt and our peat exploration mm -hmm. with this bottle. I feel like we've really hit our stride with this one. And this is uh, of the three, I'm most proud of this. And this is kind of like, if you've been following along with what we've been like, we, we are learning, like we're, mm -hmm. we're a young company. I'm a young guy. Like we're trying to figure this out and get great whiskey out there. And I think with a lot of distilleries, if you follow along with them, you can kind of grow with them and learn. This bottle, the series of the Isle of Pete and then the Fenwalker and the Fenwalker 2, there's something happening here and we're getting better and better and better. Now we're now we're in the now we're in the game. Mm -hmm. Now we're like, okay. Well, I was I gonna would, say let's talk I a little would, bit about like I would throw this into any tasting with Balcones or or Westland Westward, all mm -hmm. whiskey. I've had a lot. I've been to I've been to Westward two or three times. Oh, really? I went there alone with my wife and with a business partner. Mm -hmm. So I've been to that distillery three times. I've had their stout finish and they're this finish, and I've seen them at trade tables. This whiskey can stand up with, and these are like three, four, five, six, seven year old malt whiskey producers. That's mm -hmm. all they do, right? And here, this is like just kind of a, a random <laughs> thing we've done with whiskey we had uh, that we weren't necessarily going. I've never like set out to make malt whiskey or put out malt whiskey. And again, it's not single malt whiskey. Right. I'm, I'm of the belief that if it's not 100% malt, it's not single malt. Um, so we're not calling this a single malt by any stretch, but mm -hmm. this is a malt whiskey mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless because it is 51% malt whiskey. Uh, malted barley so this this stands up for me it mm -hmm. stands up with all the great american malt whiskey stranahan's you name it like yeah. this can sit at the table and have something to say that's 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 my feeling and this week yeah. having put this product out i'm very very happy with it well let's also talk about like when i talked to you back in september i mean you guys were locally but you guys weren't really too far outside of california right or i mean you were but like mm -hmm. I feel like you've, what I'm trying to say, I feel like you've expanded a lot more since we last talked. Well, two things. Number one, all of these releases are going out in California. So okay. these releases, you're right, are Californian mm -hmm. releases, but we are in 40 states. So we are available all over the country Okay. and in Canada. Awesome. Uh, so there is sort of a, a widespread nature. Our core releases and our Reserve Oak series, which are the black and red labels, mm -hmm. those are all uh, available far and wide. I mean, they're, they're pretty out there. Okay. They're, they're, you can go online and find them. So the last thing I've poured just now is our Rare Americana. There have been two of these. These are seven-year releases, and they wow. have oak bills 
that were chosen by the actual barrel picker. So mm -hmm. we don't do a traditional barrel picking program. You can't come and like taste the barrel and pick it. With us, you pick the oak bill. Okay. So the difference between us and like Jim Beam or Heaven Hill or whatever is mm -hmm. you don't just pick the barrel. You pick the oak bill. Gotcha. So they picked Sauternes cask and uh, the other pickers picked uh, peach brandy, French and rye. They so do. when they do that, do you um, send like multiple options or is it like they just tell you in advance, like we want this? this well, not really. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering how it compares. Like, I didn't send options. Okay. I, I've done that, but nobody yeah. ever picked that way. Okay. It's weird. Nobody ever picked quite like that. Yeah. Well, I was wondering, cause like um, those of you guys know that I did that pick with Jason and Scott um, for Jet Daniels Barrel Proof. And we only got, we got three different ones to pick between and they were so vastly different. We ended up getting two of the barrels. I'm, I'm very excited about that. That um, sounds awesome. Yeah, you have to save me a bottle of one of those. I, I, you know, I don't know how it, I was just a guest on the pick, so I don't get full control. But um, yeah, Patreon will know first about that if I do get an allocation, and you'll know first as well. But um, I don't. I'm, <laughs> I'm in for some good picks, man. Yeah, man. It, the one, well, the two we picked, we I was indecisive. One of them was like was like a like a juicy like jelly kind of bomb, like it had like that fruitiness I'd never okay. gotten on Jack Daniels, and the other one just was like everything you love about cast strength Jack Daniels, just like. Boom, in your face. I do have a few cast strength Jack Daniels um, down right there in the corner. That yeah, I told you. For those, so those of you that are on the Patreon, um, we'll do a quick hangout after this so you guys can take a look at his collection um, after the yeah. stream. So It's it, funny. The, the camera is angled in such a way that you literally can't see everything else in this room, which yeah. is just so I'll take I'll just take you guys with the webcam to show it off. Um, <laughs> I actually I got the webcam on a string. I can just be like walking around. Yeah, you can just pick the camera um, up. So we'll do that on Discord after. Um, so we're actually, we're, oh, I haven't tried this yet. We're getting close on time, but. Yeah, we're pretty much there. I mean, this is the last one. Yeah. Sauterne and French oak finish, 75% Sauterne, 75% uh, Sauterne, 25% French oak. Wow. Seven year American whiskey. Now, again, this is the same whiskey at a slightly higher proof than you tasted for the plank walker. Really? I, you so, know, I was trying to think of my favorite. Think about like, think yeah. about how different this is from oh, what you tasted. Very different. I was going to say, wild. I think plank walker was my favorite thing I tried tonight until I haven't tried this one yet, but plank walker is my jam. That's this that's we bottled really, yesterday. Really? And all of it's going to uh, Washington, D.C. Very cool. This will be available on sharedpour.com. I yes. don't know if you have to be a Patreon member or not. I don't know how that works. Yeah, but... I have a few other friends that do shared pour as well. So they usually offer it up to their patrons first. You said that's, that's Bourbon Lens? It's Bourbon Lens, Bourbon yeah. Lens. So if you guys want to get We have a couple that. podcasts with them. We did mm -hmm. – uh, what's funny is they did the Single Oak series first. Oh, really? Then uh, one of their guys who wasn't – the first podcast was with two – There's there were three people. Mm -hmm. And two of their guys were there on the first podcast. And then the other guy who wasn't there showed up on the second podcast, gotcha. broke a barrel with me in <laughs> Kentucky on That's site awesome. in the river, and then did the whole podcast. And he was there for the inaugural release on the day we were bottling our first editions of this packaging, mm -hmm. straight bourbon, straight rye, California gotcha. oak, all that. And stuff you tried. Right. He yeah. was there for it. So. That's awesome. I'm excited to try this. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, what a week. What a bottling. <laughs> Look at the color on this. Oh, one, it's too. dark. Yeah. I mean, you guys probably can't dark, see that. But... It's got red in there. It's got like... It's definitely the of... darkest one I think we've tried color-wise. Uh, yeah. This is pretty dark. The Fenwalk is pretty dark, too, if you look at the color more closely. But yeah, I drank all mine. Sorry, this guys. Is, uh, <laughs> this is really amber, like deep, deep amber. Mm -hmm. Really red, too. And the proof... Did you say the proof? 120. 120. 120. Okay. 120. All right. Let's try it. Ooh, God damn. I like that a lot. That <laughs> is really good. Wow. So this and Plank Walker, because they're the same whiskey, different oak bill. I'm going to finish my Plank Walker. I mean, if I can have a little bit more of that, I can tell please, you. Please, <laughs> Which one? You. Yeah, it's just the second one. I'm going to pour it in that glass, yep. Yeah. Man, though, I mean, that's so intensely, like, fruity. Oh, that one totally bypassed the little stopper. It just kept going. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Sorry, if only bars were, if only bar, bars were that way, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but, oh, but so I want you to like maybe tell the viewers mm -hmm. same whiskey, different oak bill. How different are these whiskeys? Extreme. I would I would never guess these are the same like whiskey that's in here. You wouldn't even guess they were the same distillery, right? Let well, alone the same yeah. mash bill, age, and distillery, and all spent the same time, literally next to each other. Like not like one in 
the 10th floor of a Rick house and one on the bottom. <laughs> right. One. Like mm-hmm. these were next to each other. Wow. Like Siamese twins. Yeah. So they were next to each other. I mean, to me, I think you know, the biggest Siamese difference. Siamese twins, the ones joined, like. I think so, yeah. I don't actually know. I don't, don't, don't quiz me on stuff like that. I don't know. I don't um, know. <laughs> so, yeah. So the, the plank walker to me is more of like. I have a, there's a note I always, I always say Home Depot note. And I mean like, like wood shavings, like kind of like freshly cut wood. Um, there is a, there is a, a nice cut wood, mm-hmm. like, like real, uh, I want to say, not sawdust, but like there's a real. Yeah. Uh, I, that doesn't make sense. I mean it in a good way. Like it's like, the, like freshly, like you walk into a place that just cut like a bunch of like. You know, the, it's like when you smell it and it smells like great, like it's appetizing, you know? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going back to the plank walker just to do a little comparison there. Yeah. Yeah, that one that one has the sweetness. Honestly, I can see how much impact that, that rum cask is having on that one. It has that sort of molasses sweetness mm-hmm. to it. It's really – the flavor is really on the front end. This one has the finish that oh, man. just goes crazy. I got a new favorite. It's that one. So I mean, yeah, I might yeah. need to sign up for their Patreon to yeah, get access yeah. to that one. That is awesome. Wow. It's it's like it's the red fruits are there. That, that's what I'm getting the most. It's like the red, the like maybe like even like a strawberry like short. I get almost note. like a vitamin like like you know when you're a kid and you have those uh, those vitamins and you always want to like have the extra one. And your parents are like no, you can't have. You mean like, like Flintstones vitamins or like because I mean people say like that, that about George no, like Dickel, the gummies but... like okay. the, the gummy vitamins like it has this sort of gelatinous like sweetness like deliciousness to it like jello <laughs> i didn't i didn't have any fun vitamins when i was a kid i just did the, the like typical flintstones ones or you whatever know what? i would say it's jello it's jello like, okay okay i like see a that cherry jello or something yeah well on yeah the nose it's really it's not on the it's not on the body mm-hmm. it's not anywhere in the flavor it's just on the nose when you smell it you go okay you, you know think- when i said strawberry shortcake i think that's the exact same note you're talking about okay I think I, I said strawberry, but now that you say like cherry jello or something, cherry jello or like blackberry jello, like those ba- like the the triple berry jellos or whatever. Or like fruit by the foot too, like some of that. Like you know when you make you're making jello and you have like or you pour the powder and you do the mixing and you get mm-hmm. that kind of waft of that 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 mm-hmm. kind of. Mm-hmm. It's a weird like artificial berry flavor that somehow developed on the nose, but when you taste it. Mm-hmm. It's this deep, rich, <laughs> right. like takes your tongue by the, grabs it by the <laughs> horns and like just whipping it around. It's crazy. I'm definitely getting cherry. And it's not sweet actually. Well, it's I was like say, kind of dry. On the nose, it smells sweeter and it's going to be more of like that candy kind of cherry note. But on the palate, it's not like, like cherry cough syrup. It's like the real actual cherries is what I'm getting. Like it's like that dark, dark cherry kind of note. Man. Yeah, it's... It's so weird uh, how different the nose. And again, I'm still getting used to this whiskey because I've only tried it yesterday and today. So I spent less than 48 hours with this whiskey. Wow. And I'm. Well, I'm just saying they're, they're paid, whoever's getting that bottle is going to be really lucky because that's that's just the full package for yeah. my, my, my palate. Because I look for those darker, richer flavors. Even in it's Scottish. dark. It's dark and it's rich mm-hmm. and the color is so deep and it's just. That's Man, really good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> make, can you make more of those? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how to recreate that. It's mm-hmm. this, it's this rare. That's why it's rare Americana. It's like it's just American whiskey. It's kind of a rare thing in that it's a one-off mash or oak bill. Uh, but yeah, that's you've now tried <laughs> a bunch of stuff that no one else has tried. So that feels pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm I've, I've enjoyed drinking it with you. Absolutely. I see um, Bill, the whiskey dick just came in the chat. I think you, he interviewed you a couple of oh, years ago. I did the whiskey. Dick. Yeah. Uh, so he, he and I um, have a dungeons and drams channel. We just started a dungeons couple weeks ago. And drams? So I've <laughs> never, it. I've never played dungeons and dragons. <laughs> like none of my friends growing up played it. And I've Bill, never played it. Bill is a master he does it like with his like coworkers and stuff like that. So he's like, Hey, why don't we blend whiskey with Dungeons and Dragons? So I'm a total noob at it. I have no idea what I'm doing. I, uh, I, I tossed a creature across the room last time because I didn't know what to do with it. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what this creature is. So let me just throw it and see what happens. Oh. Anyways, it, it was a bit crazy. I'm also doing that with Jason from the Mash and Drum, Ed from the Rock Gut Ragu, Ragu 
Rot Gut Ragu. That's that's Rot definitely. Gut Ragu. Rot Gut Review. Review. <laughs> I mess, misspoke, but Ragu does sound interesting. But <laughs> yeah, this this is that's a side channel. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then <laughs> Bill, of course, and then um, Molly from Hugging the Cactus. So it's a really fun thing. We do that every Monday night at six thirty Pacific, nine thirty Eastern. Um, y'all should check it out. Um, Grams. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a great name. It's I love yeah, the name. All credit to Bill. Bill Bill came up with all that. So oh, by the way, my character's name is Nobilis, spelled like Knob Creek. Because I'm a no. fanatic of <laughs> it's like Legolas and like Knob Creek meshed together. I don't know what it, it's it's fun though. I mean, that, and they're, they're just great guys to hang out with. So I think um, everything I know from Dungeons and Dragons is from Stranger Things. But honestly, same. I totally I, totally didn't really know what it was, and then I saw Stranger Things, and well, they I, were playing the game, and they had the creatures or whatever. I've always heard people like say they played it like when they were kids, and like none of my friends. I guess we, maybe we weren't cool enough. I don't know. Well, my kids, my friends, I was played, a Mario kid. I was right? just like, yeah, I play video games. That hey, was my video, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bourbons and bites. Let's talk about the bites. By the way, yeah, played any good games lately? We've been playing. I think. Uh, uh, what have I been playing? Not a lot. I, I, I just, I like to like throw on Breath of the Wild. Mm. I don't. So every, every classic, now and yeah. then, I have a Nintendo Switch that I got right after my wedding five years ago and i've been playing that for a long time <laughs> like, well there's so much to do even when you get like, the story there's like i like so much breath of the wild i like to like run around and climb mountains and jump off them and, oh yeah and fight the trolls and stuff i love it yeah it's i mean we have great. we have like at home we have a pc for my stuff we have a playstation 5 and we have a switch however i find myself playing the switch most often because i think i love the switch yeah. i love like you're playing you're like oh i gotta go to the bathroom you pick it up <laughs> take it with you that's pretty good i mean i don't know what more you need in life but my employees are all playing. Uh, they're all playing. Is Elden? Uh, Elden literally, Ring Bill, or... Bill just said Elden Ring. Everyone's playing. I haven't played it yet either. Elden Ring. Yeah. Everyone's playing that. Everyone is really good. But I said, "Can I get it on Switch?" Like, no, dude, you can't get it on Switch. I'm like, <laughs> I think uh, the Switch would I'm struggle. Like, you to can't play talk that. about it. I don't, I don't even know. I can't even. I can't relate. I can't play it. I know a few people on our Discord server have been Elden playing Ring it too. So to, they're all talking about it all day long. <laughs> and I got a bunch of like. 26 to 30 year old guys working here that are all very much into that game and i'm barely older than them and i i can't relate <laughs> maybe i can come in we'll do a gaming stream with them and yeah. bring some broken barrel yeah they you know what if you got you know what forget me get the three of them in here <laughs> get them drinking talking to you you guys will have a blast do a reserve oak podcast and you guys could talk about gaming these guys are they know a hell of a lot more about gaming than i do i'll tell you me that. too i think is. I say I like video games doesn't mean I'm good at them. So like I'm not yeah. good. I, I lose a lot, but I have fun with them. So yeah, we should definitely. Oh, well, you so you guys, did we had the link earlier. Um, these are available. Some of these are available to purchase online. Yeah. So I'll just kind of run through it quickly. Yeah. The Maple Musonara we had about a, two or three bottles, I think here. I think one of them sold while we were talking. This is available on brokenbarrelwhiskey.com. If you really need a bottle, you can also go to tastersclub.com. The Plank Walker was available tonight at BrokenBarrelWhiskey.com, also at Oaked.net. And for you SoCal people, it will be available at Total Wine with their barrel pick sticker for their barrel. We did two barrels. Mm. Also available at Total Wine, SoCal will be the Reckoner and the Fen Walker, wow, which okay. I didn't even have a chance to get this up on our site. So <laughs> the only place to get this, literally the only place to get the Fen Walker to is at Total Wine SoCal. There are 14 stores now. There will be 20 by the end of the year. They're wow. building five more stores in SoCal. And for our Bourbon Lens friends, uh, for that podcast, there is the Rare Americana that they are releasing. That'll be at a sharedpour.com. Um, if ever you have a question about any of these or other products, just reach out. Hit us up on Instagram, Info at infusedspirits.com. Just reach out, go to our broken barrel, type into the little comment page or whatever. Mm -hmm. Reach out, say, Hey, I'm looking for this. We will help you find it. If we can't help you find it, we'll find the next best thing for you, but we'll do whatever we can to help you guys. We want you guys to try it. And uh, I'm, I'm I, I, think, I think you liked it, right? Yeah. No, I'm so <laughs> excited because I'm, I'm always looking for local, local yeah. like businesses. And the fact that you guys are doing such amazing work with this, being right here, literally a 12 minute drive from my apartment. Like, it's so nice that like, I mean, that's pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> Too yeah. close. I, I, need, I know the way in. I know the secret little library here. <laughs> like, oh man, I need a drink. <laughs> broken barrel open. Um, someone was asking in the chat earlier about um, tours. What do you guys do here? I know you, you do private. Not really tours. We just, you know, if you schedule an appointment, 
uh, we'll give you guys a, a real proper tasting. Um, I, if, if I'm here, I will do the tasting with you guys. Um, I do travel. I'm gone all next week, for example. So my employees are, are extremely well-versed in this whiskey. They have been there from day one for the receipt of the whiskey, the aging of the whiskey, the, mm. the oak bill. Some of them help me, you know, make it. So everybody here is wildly knowledgeable about whiskey and the whiskeys we make. And so you're in good hands. If you come here for a tasting, you will leave. I guarantee you'll leave with a bottle and I guarantee <laughs> you'll leave with a great story or something, something to tell somebody. And no, we don't have a really like fancy distillery. We're not a distillery that can show you like, you know, oh, we have this copper vendum. We don't have any of that. <laughs> right. We got barrels, we got hammers, we got axes, and we got amazing creativity that lends itself to some really beautiful whiskeys that are not like anything you've tried before. So if you want a one of a kind experience, you're in Los Angeles or Southern California, make the trek out. We will take amazing care of you guys. And we will, you know, we have, we, I think we have like a four and point nine on something on Google. Oh yeah. Yeah. People have been, people find us on Google and they, <laughs> they reviewed us and we did pretty well. I don't know if we have a Yelp score. I should check that. <laughs> Maybe we might have a Yelp score, but we're doing pretty well. People have had a good time here. So yeah. If any of you guys are interested, like you said, his email is info at infused spirits.com. Okay. And I'll put all that in the description after the fact. I don't yeah. have it right now, but I'll put that down there. Um, or hit him up on Instagram because you're, you're really active yeah, yeah, on your just, Instagram. Just so Matt, DM us on Instagram. I'll, I'll help you guys out. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Like I said, we're going to pop over onto the after party hangout for a little bit um, for Discord. Um, it's, it's basically like a Zoom call. Yeah. If, if you have like a few have minutes. Time, yeah. um, we're going to show a little bit of these other bottles that he has. By the way, I've, I've just been eyeing some of them all night and oof, he's got a collection. So I do. <laughs> so cheers, you guys. Thank you all so much for watching this stream. I put a link in the description below to the first one that we did um, with Broken Barrel back in September. If you want to see their core lineup as well as... Um, no, that was like, yeah, the core lineup for that one. These were the special editions. So... Yeah. It's, it's been great. It's, it's always a good time hanging with you. And thank you again for uh, being a part of this. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so cheers, you guys. New, Thanks, pod guys. new podcast episode coming out tomorrow. I still have to edit it, so it might be a little late. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> cheers, you guys. I'll see you next week. Um, we have tons of guests coming up in the next few weeks. Basically every week until um, mid-May, I have a different guest from a different distillery. So you guys want to stay tuned. I'm also doing a stream this Saturday with my friend Aaron, who put together a Scotch flight, which every whiskey has a unique twist, and he's gonna it's gonna be like a blind kind of guessing game. So that's this Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, but otherwise, yeah, stay tuned. I have some really fun stuff coming up in the next couple of months. Um, and I hope to be back maybe, you know, next year. Maybe you guys are doing some even more awesome yeah, stuff. Even, so even six months from now, it'll be a whole different world. Awesome. Well, <laughs> cheers, guys. I will see you on cheers. Saturday and uh make sure to check out Broken Barrel. Their link is in the description. Um, if you're watching the replay, but Joe put the link in the chat earlier. So, all right. Thank y'all. Thank you to all the mods. Thank you to everyone who showed up. Hope y'all have a wonderful night. Um, we're going to hop on to Patreon Discord, hang out right now. So cheers, y'all. Have a good night.